Here's your first warned weather forecast first, sponsored by Anderson Collision Center. Visit driveanderson.com. Well, temperatures this afternoon made their way up into the upper 70s for a lot of us across the state line, even a few spots into the low 80s with some sunshine that came out later on as we got into the afternoon and the early evening. Now, as we get later into the evening, however, we do have some storms that we have to keep an eye on that are currently working their way across parts of Missouri and into Iowa. Some new storms could develop ahead of that line, moving, their way, moving its way closer and closer to the area later on over the next few hours. However, tomorrow we're actually going to be seeing a lot of dry time, much warmer temperatures, all of us getting back into the 80s, even the mid 80s with a lot more humidity as well. That round of storms that comes in later on here tonight is not the first, not the only round of storms. We have a couple more to talk about here for the weekend. I'll time those out for you coming up in your most trusted forecast a little later. From Fox 39, WQRF TV Rockford, and your home team, Eyewitness News at 9 starts now. A high school sports coach suspected of setting up a recording device in a locker room. We'll find out his charges. Plus, local motorcyclists celebrating safety on the road. The fun day raises awareness to safe driving habits. And a festival to celebrate horse racing. We visited one of the biggest parties in the state. Good evening, I'm Jess Lipson. Taylor Castro is off tonight. Thanks for joining us. We'll get to those stories in a second, but authorities in Allen, Texas have confirmed the gunman who opened fire at an outlet mall on this afternoon is dead. Gunfire was reported at Allen Premium Outlets. Nine people have been shot. A witness says the gunman was on the ground in tactical gear. The bomb squad has been going over a vehicle that's believed to belong to the shooter. Allen is about 25 miles from Dallas. A Janesville coach is arrested, accused of putting a video camera in a school locker room. Friday, a resource officer at Craig High School was told of a recording device in one of the girls' locker rooms. Janesville police and the school then started an investigation, which led to a search warrant being issued for a home on Lexington Drive. The suspect was identified as 38-year-old Brian Kitzman. Kitzman coached various sports at the high school. He was arrested and charged with possession of child pornography and violation of privacy of a person under the age of 18. Kitzman is being held in the Rock County Jail. 18 residents are being displaced after a duplex catches fire in Janesville. Fire crews were called to a home on Newman Street just north of Mount Zion Avenue around 8.15 last night. When they arrived, they found flames coming from a bedroom. The fire was put out quickly. One resident was injured and treated at the scene. Fire damage is, is estimated to be $100,000. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. The American Red Cross is assisting all those that are displaced. Illinois State Police have released the names of five additional people who lost their lives in that major accident on Interstate 55 last week. They are 73-year-old Joseph and 71-year-old Donna Bates of Crystal Lake. Also killed were 64-year-old Michael and 54-year-old Amy Zinchuk of Champaign. The name of the fifth victim is 64-year-old Earl Legrand of Florissant, Missouri. The, vic the first victim of the accident released last week was 88-year-old Shiley Harper of Franklin, Wisconsin. Officials are still working to identify the remaining victim. 37 people were taken to hospitals with injuries which ranged from minor to life-threatening. That pileup happened when strong winds caused brownout conditions from soil being kicked up from adjacent farm fields. 72 cars and trucks were involved in the pileup. As the weather starts to warm up in the state line, residents will see more than just cars and trucks on the road. Our Nickel Delgado has more. It's awesome, you know, it's to make the people around us aware that it is motorcycle riding season. For over 30 years, motorcyclists have kick-started their riding season with the Safety and Awareness Parade. Motorcyclists Kim Tanner and Stacy Gutierrez tell me they have been riding for years and safety is still the number one most important thing for all motor vehicles. This is an awareness parade. If one person is aware, it saves one life. That's exactly. a start. The parade started at Carlson Ice Arena and ended at Kegel Harley-Davidson, where riders were served lunch. The vice president of Kishwaukee Valley Chapter, Kurt Hewson, says motorcycles move, stop, and react differently than cars do on the road. I mean, you hear of some tragic stuff already this year, you know, and people just have to remember that we're out there, uh, share the road, and we have to reciprocate. We have to do the same thing. We, we don't command any more space or rights than uh, anybody driving any other automotive. If people would to put down your phones and be aware of what's going on around you, that would be awesome. 
Kim and Stacy say it's vital for drivers to be cautious that they are sharing the road with motorcyclists. We're wives, moms, grandmas. grandmas. So, yeah, we'd like to go home to them. Look twice, save a life is our motto. So look twice before you pull out in an intersection or take off at a stoplight. Make sure there's not a motorcycle coming the other direction. Reporting in Rockford for your home team, I'm Nikel Delgado. Organizers stress for drivers to double check your blind spots, intersections, and leaving a car distance away. For motorcyclists, it's strongly encouraged to take more than one motorcycle safety class. One of the biggest festivals in Illinois went down in the Forest City. Every year, the Don Carter Derby Party hosts hundreds of horse racing fans. It all took place at Shooter's Bar and Grill and Don Carter Lanes. Food trucks are lined up, plenty of special drinks to enjoy, and live music. There were also Kentucky Derby hats being sold and plenty of people to enjoy the annual race with. This Kentucky Derby party is huge. We have it every year. It's always on the first Saturday of May. It gets really, really, really busy. It also was an opportunity for sports betting for those hoping they were lucky enough to pick the winning horse. This one-of-a-kind house takes you straight back to the 60s. It's a historic mid-century modern house known as Flying Nun House, referencing the 1960s television show that starred Sally Field. The nun in the show wore head gear that lifted her off the grounds. This four bedroom house is in Bellevue, Nebraska and is listed just below $700,000. The home also boasts three fireplaces and the floor plan is shaped like a football. It does need quite a bit of TLC, which explains the low price, but with a little bit of elbow grease, it could become a mid-century modern enthusiast's home a country celebrating years of history and tradition as the king gets crowned. Coming up, we'll see those festivities from England. Our temperatures made their way into the upper 70s once again here today. However, that does lead to some storm chances both later on tonight as well as later into the weekend. I'll break down timing of those and what impacts we could see from those storms coming up in just a few minutes. You're watching Eyewitness News, your home team with Taylor Castro, Reagan Holgate, and meteorologist Jordan Wolf. The UK has a new king. 70 years after Queen Elizabeth II took the throne, King Charles III and Queen Camilla are officially crowned at their coronation in London today. The ceremony drawing thousands wanting to pay tribute to Britain's new monarch. The United Kingdom entering a new era on Saturday as King Charles III is crowned in a solemn and historic service at Westminster Abbey. I come not to be served, but to serve. Both of Charles's sons, William and Harry, in attendance in the congregation. It's the first time that Harry has been seen with a family since the release of his controversial memoir. He did not sit together with his brother and left soon after to return to the U.S. God save the king! God save the king! ceremony blended traditions dating back nearly a thousand years along with new ones. Faith leaders from outside the Church of England took an active role for the first time along with people from all four nations of the United Kingdom and the Royal Air Force's red arrows flew over London leaving a trail of red, white and blue in their wake. Charles takes the throne facing a challenge that his mother did not in winning over parts of the public who are skeptical of the monarchy's role in the modern era. They're a symbol of soft power, vested interests, and a very kind of old feudal um, system in the country. Still, most who came to see the pomp and pageantry say that they came away impressed. Great celebration. We love every minute of it, and everybody else's as well, aren't they? It's great. And when the carriage went past, wow. It was a wow minute. <laughs> like once in a lifetime experience. Cold, wet, tired, feet hurt, but... Fantastic. And the festivities aren't over. A special coronation concert is scheduled at Windsor Castle on Sunday. In London, Alex Hogan, Fox News. A beer made for a king that never got to be crowned is going up for auction. This beer was made for the coronation of Edward VII. He famously abdicated the throne before his own coronation. The bottle had been forgotten in storage for 86 years, but it was pulled out from the cellar of the Green King Brewery. Proceeds will go to benefit the Prince's Trust charity. But experts say the brew is merely a historical curiosity as it's no longer drinkable. Another day in the 70s across the state line. That leads to storm chances tonight and through the weekend. Coming up, Jordan times them out for us. Coming up in the First Warren Weather Forecast next. Now, your First Warren Weather Forecast from meteorologist Jordan Wolf. 
Well, temperatures today across the area made their way all the way up into the 70s and even a, a few spots into the 80s here earlier today with a little bit of sunshine that we saw as we got later on into the afternoon. Some of our afternoon highs across the area into the low 80s when we look at Rochelle, Sterling and Freeport. 79 is where we topped out in Rockford. Some other spots a little bit further off to the northwest remained in the low to mid 70s. Now as we get later on into the evening, we have to watch out for some of these storms that are going to be inching their way closer over the next few hours. Those storms could bring us a severe threat into the night tonight, and then a few more rounds of storms are possible as we get later on here into the weekend. Because of those and increasing cloud cover, temperatures do not fall very far, only getting back down to 60 degrees for that overnight low. The condition with some of these storms that we could see is some of that a larger amounts of hail compared to some of the other severe weather threats that we would typically see otherwise. So we check out Futurecast here, and this is at least one particular computer model showing off some of these storms coming in to the area after midnight tonight before clearing as we get into the early part of tomorrow morning. Another similar computer model also shows these storms, but these, this one remains a little bit further off to the south, keeping us actually fairly clear during the early part of the overnight hours. So I do think the solution is probably going to be somewhere in between some of those two. So we do need to remain weather aware for the potential for a line of these storms to come in as we get to around 11 midnight, 1 or 2 o'clock here this morning. Now as we get into the day tomorrow, we do get some dry time and we actually get a lot of dry time for the afternoon, bringing our temperatures all the way up into the 80s. We're going to be talking about some very hot and humid conditions, similar to what we would be seeing as we get into the middle of summer. So 84 degrees for our afternoon high tomorrow. We could see a very isolated storm early on into the day. However, I do think the higher coverage of that weather does come in as we get into the evening. We pick up right where we left off with future cast here with some clear skies and some capping in the atmosphere, keeping those storms from developing at least during the early part of the day. A few spotty showers could be ruled could come in during the early part of the overnight, but then the higher coverage, as I already mentioned, does come in as we get later on into the overnight hours, potentially a few rounds of those storms coming through producing some very, very heavy rain and even some small hail in some of those locations. So breaking down some of these threats, we do have a couple rounds to talk about. First of all, tonight coming in right around midnight to around four o'clock in the morning, some damaging winds and some hail with that threats as well. Then Sunday night, that next round of storms come in and that one could bring us all of the severe weather threats, but mainly the going to be focus is going to be on the damaging winds. And then once again, Monday afternoon and into the evening, we could see some of those scattered thunderstorms and some showers during that time as well. So a little bit more of an active pattern for the next few days. Temperatures into the 80s for tomorrow, back down into the 70s on Monday. But then just we are talking about those 70s sticking with us a little bit longer, clearing out and drying out for much of the week ahead. Thank you, Jordan. Reagan's in next with sports. Bears rookie camp continued today over at Hallis Hall, and one young gun has caught the attention of many. Reagan will tell us who he is next. Now sports with Reagan Holgate. Day two of Bears rookie camp means another day for the youngsters to try and prove themselves worthy of a spot on that roster. Not much of the hype right now, much of the hype right now, and rightfully so, is focused on the top pick offensive lineman Darnell Wright. But it's in the third round where many draft experts felt the Bears made their best pick. Ryan Poles said the Bears were shocked he was even still on the board at 115. Running back Roshan Johnson out of Texas is trying to show his versatility as a top flight running back and a special team standout. You always know when you draft somebody like when Ryan picks them and you get like seven text messages from like special teams coaches from around the league uh, that you know what, we made a great selection and everybody was like, dang. And then when you see this guy play football, he is violent as they come. He could almost be a linebacker. Now let's go over to Packers rookie camp. Green Bay drafted three receivers to surround first year quarterback Jordan Love. His weapons are young this upcoming season with second year guys like Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs holding it down as veterans. But the young class of pass catchers are eager to come together as a unit. Their first task at hand is to learn the Packer way throughout minicamp and beyond. For the guys who play wide receiver here at Green Bay, I'm sure they can say that uh, you got to be pretty smart to play the position, but um, nothing that I can't handle. I'm learning all that I need to right now. So I mean, we all together in this. Uh, we all come together and, you know, find ways to win. And, you know, I'm just here to add value where I can. And, you know, those guys, we're a team. So, you know, 
we're going to all get around each other and support each other and help us, you know, thrive. You know, everybody want to be in a group that want to work, you know, want to be the best. But, you know, being in a young group that I'm in, um, I feel like we can all, you know, relate because, you know, everybody just coming into the league. You know, being around some young guys is, is fun. All right, more action coming your way from Wrigley Field today. Game one yesterday was all about Matt Mervis and his Major League debut. Today, the focus was on trying to grab a series win. Kerry Wood threw out the first pitch in honor of the 25th anniversary of his 20 strikeout performance. Let's go to the third inning. Marlins are already up a run here, and it's Jorge Soler. He takes one deep off of Drew Smiley, and that puts the Cubs in a 2-0 hole early on. Now into the eighth inning, Trey Mancini lifts a shallow one into center field. Peyton Burdick, he's blinded by the sun, can't make the catch. The ball actually goes off of his leg, and that gets Mancini to second base. That helps set up this play with runners in scoring position. Nick Madrigal goes the other way, and the Cubs bring two home. Three to two, the lead for the good guys. Next batter up is Miguel Amaya. He takes this one up the middle. And again, infielders can't make the play, and Madrigal scores Amaya's first career hit and RBI. His parents were loving it, and so were Cubs fans. Cubs win 4-2. Series finale is tomorrow. Now in Beloit, the Sky Carp continue their series against the West Michigan Whitecaps. Lefty Zach King was the Sky Carp starting pitcher. He did his job. He pitched six shutout innings and struck out seven batters. Bottom of the second, catcher Andrew Fernandez singles. Brady Allen scored for a 1-0 Sky Carp lead. The big moment, though, came in the bottom of the sixth inning. Sky Carp third baseman Joshua Zamora crushes the ball to the outfield. It went all the way to the fence. Zamora's not the fastest guy in baseball, but he was going for it. He hits third base and gets the green light, sending him all the way home. Zamora made it all the way for an inside-the-park home run. The Sky Carp won 4-0, improving their record to 16-9. They'll host the Whitecaps again tomorrow at 1 o'clock. And two of the greatest minutes in sports has been conquered by Mage. Mage won the 149th Kentucky Derby, edging out two fills and Angel of Empire. Mage entered the race with 16 and one odds, but came out on top and earned 1.86 million for seizing first place. That's sports. We'll be right back. Seems like great temperatures outside, but it seems like we'll have rain and storms ahead. Unfortunately, we do got to talk about some of these storms. As we get into the summer season, this has become a little bit more common. Right now, the first one interactive radar from Rockford Auto Glass and more starting to show some of those coming in here later on into the night tonight. Tomorrow, though, temperatures will get all the way up into the 80s. Very hot and humid, fueling another round of storms coming in late Sunday night. Scattered showers, but then drying out for the rest of the week. Thank you guys for joining us. Have a great night.